The entire blockchain adoption globally is at less than 0.2%. We've been around for 10 years, guys. 10 years. Less than 0.2%. There's a major problem that the revolutionary technology should not be stuck at 0.2%. One of the things that I think we see a lot of in all spaces, and that blockchain space aside, but particularly in the blockchain space, is a lot of ideas and a lot of promises that go on forever. If you have an idea that you want to put on a blockchain, yet it is still full of frictions and centralized and not benefiting communities and societies, my advice to you is just don't do it. And in fact, it would be nicer to see people that are more driven to making an impact on the people's wallets that need it the most and people that probably don't even have wallets. Blockchain can help ensure that you protect the information that belongs to you, you manage the money that you own, no one else should have um, the power over what you own. Uh, you, shouldn't be able, you shouldn't need to trust anyone else but you and yourself. Focus on that specific use case that you were trying to solve efficiently and, and do it really well. Make it as efficient as you can. Because if you're just in this for short-term speculative gain, then you're actually doing the opposite of efficiency. You're making things less efficient. Dota Network presents Together with One Day Productions The Next Step 10 years ago, blockchain technology received the necessary push for mass adoption by having the mysterious Satoshi Nakamoto publish Bitcoin's white paper. 10 years ago, a foundation was laid for digital asset transfer by means of decentralized ledger technology. A promise to all people that there is no reason why someone no different than you and I should be in control of your money, your data, and your future. 10 years down the line and it seems the blockchain space is stuck in the paradigm of greed, confusion, and absence of real use cases. I was born in a city called Zahri in Lebanon, and uh, during the war uh, where uh, folks didn't like each other and uh, there was a restriction on um, the freedom of thoughts, freedom of liberty, which I didn't like, which actually what got my family to move to Canada and since that moment I decided that not to do anything in my life unless it's servicing everybody on the planet not a single group not uh, two different groups everybody can benefit from it innovating the future takes time and patience Tufi Saliba the CEO of Toda Network being an activist and a thought leader throughout most of his life began programming and working in blockchain in 2001 with over 15 startups under his belt 11 have failed, but four of them were a success, including the Toda Network, an asset management platform that allows you for frictionless transfer of meaningful digital assets and value-preserving transactions, essentially taking blockchain to the next level. It's going to tackle the current problems that prevent the blockchain space from expanding further and answer an important question. Is DLT today truly decentralized? DLT is a bull term that was created by uh, Deloitte to refer to blockchain. But what it refers to is distributed ledger technology. Not all blockchains are distributed. Actually, there's not a single blockchain out there that is truly distributed. Zero. They're all actually replicated ledger. And the blockchain is not necessarily a ledger. So the DLT thing, put that aside. We're not about ledger again. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes along with these two things, having meaningful digital assets and having this value-preserving transaction channel. One of them is that you can't have a ledger, which means that in Toto, we have to give up, at the base Toto protocol, we have to give up this idea of having a ledger that anyone can go and query at any time and where you have a, a you know, guarantee of execution around things and you have a whole bunch of robustness because you have to pay for that. Dan Tolliver, the CTO of Toda Network, 
is the second half of Torah. Coming from the world of security and privacy applications, Dan plays several essential roles within the team, including Toda's Research Center. There's another factor here too, though, which is that in a replicated ledger, you have a large number of, of entities that are maintaining the state of that ledger on your behalf. These are miners. And the way that they function is actually very similar to the way that our current financial system functions. If I want to send you $100 from my bank account, I do that by saying to my banker, hey, please send $100 to Miguel, and eventually maybe he gets around to doing that for me. If I want to send you $100 worth of Bitcoin, I say to the Bitcoin miners, hey, please send $100 worth of Bitcoin from my account to Miguel's account, and eventually maybe he gets around to doing that for me. If I want to give you cash, I just produce the $100 bill, which I have maintained, I give it to you, you validate that it's a real $100 bill, and then you accept it. All of the work is done by you and I. We don't have any intermediaries. So what is Toda first? I need to tell you what is the internet. The internet sits on something called TCP IP. What is TCP IP? It's a protocol that enables packets, network packets, to be transmitted across the network that they carry information. Those packets cannot transmit value. What is Toda? It's a modification of those packets. They're able to have value managed and being transmitted without having a third party. So with Toda, we do this kind of magic trick. Here's the magic trick. A few other nodes on the network are going to do some work for me as the sender on my behalf when we do this transfer. I am going to do exactly the same amount of work for a few other nodes on the network. And as long as the work that those nodes are doing for me is exactly the same as the work that I'm doing for them, then I've actually managed to pull that work back into the transaction channel and we have our value preservation property back. So we've stripped everything down, made it as clean, as simple, and possible as, as we possibly can to be able to get meaningful digital assets and value preservation. And then we can build decentralized protocols back on top of it that take advantage of that and add in what they need to be able to get the functionality back all the way up to a ledger. And we don't tell people, hey, believe us. We don't need anybody to believe us. Come and verify. We already have about eight companies building on Torah for, for the last five months. We have about 10 more that are coming, including Ethereum on Torah and a few others. The difference between what we're doing and the rest of the world is they're trying to convince that their technology works. We don't really need to convince anybody. We know it works and we're building things on top of it. I have oversight over all the joint ventures that we're creating within Toda Network. Uh, as well as uh, working with developers, making sure that we're shaping up right, the, the proof of concepts that are implementing the Toto protocol. You suddenly find yourself in a space that's removed from all these blockchain enthusiasts. That's very much removed because you're, you're actually trying to solve real problems. So your focus is no longer about the tokenomics of your solution. Because you remove all of that, it's not necessary anymore. Toda Network is actively attracting interest through its showcase event called Toda Day, a gathering for blockchain innovators who are tired of the speculative aspects of the space and feel that many of the current protocols out there just don't deliver. Toda Day is also an opportunity for ongoing projects to present themselves. Let's look at some of the highlights from the Toda Network family. Toda Q, designed to be the bank of the future, a financial asset management platform for SMEs and financial institutions, including municipalities and national governments, releasing the full power of the Toda protocol, but specifically tailored for the world of finance. It is the first out of 19 companies currently building on Toda. Its global expansion spans from South Korea to Singapore to Europe, Africa and Americas. Hassan Khan, the CEO and co-founder of Toda Q, explains some of the intricacies of the project, including STAR or the strategic Toda node asset reserve. Toda as a data ownership management and transfer protocol 
It's efficient enough that it doesn't need an integral coin or token or asset that the protocol knows and that's needed in order to transact and to settle. And the TOTA note was that very first digital asset that was placed on TOTA. But it's a choice. It's there to monetize the entire ecosystem, to allow for the production and trade in more goods and services in the real economy on TOTA. But people and businesses have a choice of whether they want to use it. And to the extent it adds value, people will, but they don't have to. And a lot of that is embedded in sort of the whole philosophy of what TOTA is. Daniel Saliba, Sufi's brother who comes from the world of real estate and has been an active proponent of introducing blockchain into the realty space, presents Land OT or Land on TOTA, a cryptographic representation of each square meter of a particular land enabling the use and transfer of something that is currently in a very distant market from the mainstream the market of land ownership. As much as land is important, we regard it as one of the most important natural resources that we've ever had. It's not seamlessly integrated to the financial market. And by doing so, we create that marketplace where people can exchange land frictionless, seamlessly, therefore enabling these units to become kind of a currency backed by land. So helping the developer, helping the community, helping the government, yet at the same time, giving them a medium of exchange that is valuable in the long term and in the short term. Ethereum on TOTA, a way to bring Ethereum back from its knees by finally giving it the power to process as many transactions as the crypto kitties require. We started investigating, turns out from the 2000 dApps, 80% are their scams. So we're down to 400. From the 400, there are a lot of people that are just trying to ride on the wave, that wave that barely made it to the 0.2%. We came to realize that it's about 40 to 80 companies there are actually valid. Over 10,000 developers, they learned to build on Ethereum globally. There's something there, but it's not delivering on its promises. Forbes, Ethereum will plummet further in 2018, right? And sure enough, Ethereum has plummeted in 2018. And it started with cute cats killed the Ethereum network. So if you're familiar with CryptoKitties, these are digital collectibles, they're digital cats. The app launched and Ethereum broke. Now we're dealing with collectible digital cats that we send back and forth. And it only had 10,000 users. So I'm gonna bring on hundreds of thousands of users in the next quarter or two. If we get to that kind of scale, as I expect we will, Ethereum can't keep up. I've been developing renewable energy around the world for the last 10 years. About a year and a half ago, we brought the blockchain to it, allowing people to now prepay for clean energy. We have customers right now in over 35 countries. We've got hundreds of megawatts that we need to install, which will equate to millions of people. I've spoken to Dan and the team and they're confident they can get me a solution and one that will happen quickly. We're not a speculative company. We're not going out there saying, okay, if we build it, they will come. We've already built it and they've come. Now all of a sudden, we're faced with the challenge of how do we get it in their hands so it's usable and as quickly as possible. It's no wonder that scalable business projects on the blockchain are turning to TOTA for viable solutions. After all, the TOTA network has what the team calls being sexy, and that is S-E-C-S-I, or having security, efficiency, confidentiality, scalability, and interoperability. The five crucial factors for a real decentralized blockchain solution. All five of which Tora was founded on, making it much different than a global public ledger, which is not an easy thing to scale. Because you've got network overhead, so every time anyone does anything, everybody has to know about that, right? That's the everybody reads part. And if you have to tell everyone on earth that you are buying a cup of coffee, that is going to cost you more than that cup of coffee. So there are certain use cases that are simply inaccessible to a global public ledger. Uh, you also have storage for all of that information, that costs. Potentially you have to store it for all time, that's very costly. 
Um, and then you also have compute because there's a set of rules that need to be followed for new things to be added to this lecture. And so everything that goes in needs to be checked. And it needs to be checked by everyone who is maintaining that lecture. So you have a whole bunch of miners, generally, who are maintaining the ledger, who are replicating it, who all do the same computing to ensure that whatever is trying to go into the ledger can go into the ledger, and those invariants are, are kept. You can store child porn on Ethereum, and nobody can stop it. Is this the world you want to build? You can store a murder live and store it on Ethereum blockchain, have everybody have access to it, and nothing can stop it. Is that the world we want? Or do we want a world that, whether it's a smart contract or not, for us to have the proof and not for the rest of the world to see it unless we want them to see it and we want the proof. And that's what Tora does. But aren't we getting away from the public nature of everything then and, and full transparency? I mean, is that, is that moving us away from where we want to be? There is a transparency, but there's always a balance between transparency and privacy and confidentiality. The moment you take people's privacy away, it's the first step to taking their liberty. The moment you take confidentiality away from companies, is the moment you start collapsing those companies. So those are essential elements, whether people like it or not. Having a public ledger that is available for everybody is not going to work. Interoperability is not going to work, scalability is not going to work, and we do not want a world where bad people can put bad things on those things and leave them for generations to come. This is not the world that we sign up to live in. We sign up for a world that can protect people's liberty, privacy, and can enable a lot of people to interact between each other without having a third party that's sucking the blood out of them. So we're just that missing piece of the puzzle. We're not here to say, it's like, hey, we're going to build the best technology and we're going to uh, fork Ethereum ourselves and we're going to fork Bitcoin and we're going to take over the world. We're, not, we're here to actually make sure that nobody's going to take over that world. We're here to make sure that we're building something that people can build on top of it. Uh, we can then use those protocols to build up to a ledger. So should we need it, we can actually build a global public ledger up here. And uh, you know, I think that there are arguably some use cases where that's important. And we can plug in to, for example, our compute engine, exactly the Ethereum virtual machine, so that the invariance and the rules that this ledger follows are exactly those of Ethereum, getting us back to Ethereum on Toda. That is going to have cost factors that still reflect that use of network storage and compute. But we can, we can do some interesting things if we think of those as separate components. And if we can push some of that consensus work down onto the TOTA protocol. In particular, we can do things like say, I have a smart contract, I want a 100x replication of the data inside it, and I want a 100x uh, guarantee of execution for the rules around this smart contract. But I don't want more than that. What we have right now in smart contracts is sort of a, a monolithic entity that says, I'm going to put a smart contract on this ledger, and I want all of the miners of this ledger, no matter how many there are, to execute the rules of this smart contract. That doesn't make any sense. Because essentially, as Ethereum goes up in price, or as Ether rather goes up in price, there are more miners, and now you've got more replication. As it goes down in price, there are less miners, and now you've got less replication. But none of that impacts the dynamics of my smart contract. My smart contract presumably is independent from that calculation. Why should it be bound to that in terms of its cost, the gas cost? I should be able to say, you know, I've got a thousand dollars worth of value in the smart contract. I want an appropriate amount of replication and guarantee of execution. And with Toto, with Ethereum on Toto, you can potentially do that. We've already released enough information for people to do whatever needs to do. What we have released is instructions for devices to connect with each other in a fully decentralized setting and nothing can stop that. Somebody is gonna do it. So I tell you, James, if you end up forking Ethereum or not, somebody is going to do it. It takes 10 plus uh, hours to just understand what blockchain is. And then it takes another 10 um, plus hours to understand what TOTA protocol is. And once they learn about it and they understand it, then they really can't think about the old blockchain way. And if you think back to, if I were to take you 10 years ago, uh, who wrapped their head around Bitcoin? Nobody. Currently, in each and every Homo sapien, there's something that is called the Alveolus Capillary Protocol that is responsible to do over one billion transactions per second. 
and it does it in a fully decentralized way. And even if you want to have your brain to control it with the full power of your brain, you cannot control it. It's still going to do its work exactly how it's designed. And that protocol is responsible to do the exchange between the oxygen that you take and the carbon dioxide. Okay? So what we're building, we're building that missing piece of the puzzle. We're not going to go and do this and build the entire body. There's other people building the hands, people building their heads, and so on and so forth. So imagine if you had all of the you know, video game achievements from all the video games you'd ever played in your life. If you actually owned those in a trophy room, and you had real ownership of them, and you could prove that ownership, and you could even transfer them potentially to other people if you wanted, in the way that you can with an actual trophy. We don't have anything like that right now. So this is what meaningful digital assets mean. It, it means something that you own, that you have control over and possession over, and you can pass down to your grandkids. There's no reason why the 99.8% of the planet, they still have no access to blockchain technology. We need to bring it to everybody. And if you, what you have seen so far, in this world, it's like, oh, it's disruptive, it's revolutionary. You've only seen the tip of the iceberg. What you have seen is less than 0.2% the global adoption. What you will see is not a wave, you will see a tsunami. Dufi Saliba, Sasha Lansky, Daniel Saliba, Jane Boo, and Dan Tolliver. The always growing Dota team is perhaps closer than ever before to give the blockchain space a global upgrade. Will this be the technology to finally pave the way and produce the much needed worldwide use case for mass adoption? As Tufi travels around the world to some of the highest esteemed places like the UN, he has only one goal in mind to usher in the next step for something he truly believes in. Join Tota.network. Be a part of the next step. <laughs>